Um, thanks so much, Amanda, for that fantastic uh, introduction. And it is, uh, it is really great to be here. Um, um, I am the Shadow Minister for uh, Research, Science and Innovation, though those of you who follow British politics will may be aware that um, our Prime Minister has decided that uh, with all the challenges we face, now is the time to reorganise all the departments of government. So who knows uh, who, uh, what I'll be shadowing when I leave uh, this, uh, this event. But regardless, let me tell you, regardless of that, I will still remain um, a, uh, a, a self-proclaimed uh, tech evangelist. And so it is great to be in a room full of, I assume, tech uh, advocates and, uh, if you like, uh, preach to the choir uh, about the opportunities tech offers for collaboration, innovation and the promotion of public good. Now, I, uh, my, um, my, I'll start by just saying something which may disappoint uh, many of you. Um, I started off in hardware. Um, as a hardware engineer, um, building circuit boards, uh, and I thought that was great, actually, you know. Uh, but I did spend 10 years uh, developing software and applications in C++, C++ uh, and various proprietary languages. And when I think of the time, the lost time in my life, working on proprietary languages, my God, you know. So, um, it, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that's not going to be happening, I hope, to any, any young engineers today. Um, but So I still think that makes me the closest thing to a developer uh, in the House, House of, of Commons at the moment. And software has been a huge part of my life. But I will say to you, you know, software is a huge part of everyone's lives. Uh, it's, uh, there's no part of the economy that is not run through or in tandem with, in some way, uh, software. But to many, it is obscure and inaccessible. To too many of my constituents, indeed, it is threatening. They feel software tech not, is something that's not done for them, something that's done to, to, them, to them rather than for them or with them. They feel as though some opaque, the algorithm <laughs> um, from tech giants you know, is having an increasing impact on their lives, an impact that they have no power to change. So I want people to feel empowered to take control of the technology that rules their workplace and their, per and their personal lives, and often uh, their access to government services. And I believe very strongly that open source presents us, and I'll take Amanda's definition on that, uh, presents us with the opportunity to democratize technology, which is something I feel really passionately about, and also to foster collaboration, driving competition, and innovation. And so um, uh, open, you know, just as one stat, uh, Open UK has estimated that it delivers an economic boost of between 30 and 43 billion pounds to the UK. And I also say that I have a bit of form in this. As, when I was elected as MP uh, back in 2010, I was the first MP to mention the Internet of Things in the House of Commons. And I was also the first MP to uh, publish um, all my uh, meetings and my casework uh, anonymized as open source, open data rather, open data. And um, thank you. Actually, I, I, back in 2011, 12, 13, I, think I ran a competition. Uh, the prize was T in the House of Commons um, for the, the best uh, application of my uh, data, my open, my, the tagline was open MP data. And uh, I had to stop doing that because it, it was too much effort, but it was just to, to run the thing. But it was really interesting the, what, what could be done. And I do think that there's so much opportunity to increase the, sort of the accessibility and openness of our uh, government and, the, and parliament through open data. But I'm also and, you know, really concerned that over that time, like it's 13 years almost I've been an MP, the successive governments, conservative governments, but their legislative and policy agenda 
on digital, whether it be the online harm spills or AI strategy or uh, security and resilience, you know, it lacks ambition or it's wholly inadequate and it doesn't understand and reflect the opportunities of technology. There's a number of reasons for that which I won't go into, but one particular reason is that I think successive Conservative governments do not see regulation as supportive of innovation. Now, regulation can be a barrier to innovation, but also regulation can support innovation. It can support particularly in many ways, but access of smaller, more agile companies to government contracts, to, uh, to marketplaces. And I think the government has the wrong-headed idea that regulation is anti-growth. And I just want to say regulation can be pro-growth and the strong evidence that it's the lack of agile regulation that is undermining competition across many sectors of our economy, dragging down innovation and productivity. And I think that is true in open source. And we have, as a result, we have one of the lowest levels of business investment in the G7. And many of our great tech startups, you know, are being bought up or moving abroad due to a lack of finance, uh, which is re related in part to the lack of regulatory uh, certainty. So that's why I'm really proud to be part of obviously Labour's uh, front bench, uh, which includes our, uh, <laughs> at the moment at any rate, we have the Department of Culture, Media in Sport and a uh, colleague, um, and we really you know, get the opportunities of, of uh, technologies such as uh, open source when they're well targeted Activist regulation can be both pro-growth and pro-innovation. So good regulation uh, creates a virtuous circle where more people trust. And I think the issues, you know, the issues about security and resilience are, are critical here. More people trust and use the systems, encouraging greater investment and in turn more adoption across sectors. And just as with food or an electrical product, people have to have a basis a basic level of trust that the products that are coming, that are being served by open source are safe and we need to develop that, we need to build that with new technologies, with standards particularly that can be trusted and head off problems uh, before they ever arise. And I also have a bit of form here when I worked at, um, when I worked for, for a company called Nortel developing open standards for pan-European um, business systems, and at Ofcom I was a real advocate for open standards for interfacing to incumbent companies like British Telecom to open up our national uh, infrastructure to competition. So I do, you know, I think really that the, there will be a driving agenda for the next Labour government to deliver what uh, our Shadow Secretary of State, Lucy Powell, calls a new settlement for the digital age working for the many. And as digital technologies transform our society and economy, we're going to look to open up uh, data to, while drawing on world's leading regulation to ensure that it's safe and secure, um, and ensuring consumer rights, upskill our workers, uh, and empower consumers and small businesses to take ownership and spread technology wealth across our country. We look to diffuse tech, digital tech uh, across public services. There's so much opportunity there. Driving improvements, bringing services closer to people, making them more effective and efficient, alongside ensuring we have a connected Britain using 5G innovation to its full potential. So the choice is clear. Unlock the power of the digital revolution in the interests of the many, or continue to benefit a smaller few. And I know on which side I feel open source is. And so to achieve this, uh, you also need, you need a government that works in active partnership with industry and the tech sector. And under a Labour government, that's exactly what you'll get. Now, I know that I doubt that you, many of you have read our fantastic indus, industrial strategy, Prosperity Through par Partnership. So I'm here to tell you just briefly about it. It sets out our sort of bold vision for the country and it adopts what's called a mission-based approach, which is the aim of achieving four goals. I'll just go through these quickly. Delivering clean power by 2030, harnessing data for the public good, national mission, caring for the future and building a resilient economy and that is about so resilient supply chains, opening up procurement and um, making sure that that's, we have uh, national security is at the heart of that. 
So I talked about a, a bit about um, about harnessing data for the publish, public good today, but I would really encourage you, I would really interest in your feedback as well, if you take a look at the industrial strategy and uh, feedback what you, uh, what you think on it. And particularly on uh, harnessing data for the public good. You know, you need to use new capabilities in data analysis and artificial intelligence to deliver better public services and improve people's quality of life. That is what, you know, we're about as a party. That we're already seeing data-based technologies transforming our economy. Um, AI is being used to prevent fraud, enable search engines, develop vaccines and medicines. One just key principle I want to leave you with, you know, you, we believe that government can actively shape these technologies for the public good, such, such as through open source, and that they have the potential to increase productivity, deliver better public, public services, and improve quality of life. But equally, and that goes hand in hand with having an ethical heart to the regulation and the support for these industries. So we are already a world leader in AI ethics um, and safety research, and our academic researchers and software engineers are solving the existing issues, such as uh, beginning to solve existing issues, such as privacy, cybersecurity, safeguarding children. But we also are looking ahead to the future risks, like uh, the potential for opaque. AI systems to diverge from our <laughs> intended objective. So we look to lead the way in data to be pro-innovation, the regulatory regime which ensure that the UK's data ecosystem is secure and trusted, providing certainty to businesses and delivering better outcome for consumers. We'd like to look to see how we could go further to make data sets open to businesses, researchers and citizens, uh, learning from the uh, initiatives such as open banking. And on procurement, which I think is a huge issue, particularly for small businesses, but also for the, um, for the take up of, of, open, of open source, we have a five point procurement plan, uh, which looks at you know, maximizing post-Brexit opportunities to ensure all public procurement promotes the national interest, getting tough on suppliers who fail to deliver for the taxpayer, guaranteeing transparency about how taxpayers' money is spent, and, and, and overseeing the biggest wave of insourcing in a generation. We want to deliver on intelligent procurement through, through uh, intelligent procurers, um, and also reducing on the bureaucratic burden placed on SME contractors within the bidding process and which will tackle late payments. And I think that um, for, for the open source community, the opportunity in public service is absolutely huge. Also, um, as an international focus, we would, fo we would work to increase the open and secure international flow of data and to maintain Britain's data adequacy standards within the European Union, with, with, with the European Union helping UK companies do business in Europe. And I think we must be much more active in the development of standards. Again, you know, I think standards, open standards, transparent standards, you know, can make such a contribution to the con to the uh, competition but also to the transparency and accessibility of our public services. So, you know, it's been a real pleasure to speak to you um, today. It's great to be in a room full of, of uh, you know, tech advocates. Again, I was going to be different when I walk across the road into Parliament in a few minutes. Um, I, you know, um, I, hope, I know you've got a fantastic programme. I'm not saying that I'm jealous, but hey. Um, you've got a fantastic programme of events today. Um, you know, really, our industrial strategy, the thing I'm thinking about day and night, is how we create the conditions for our emerging industries to thrive and to deliver on those great jobs, high skill jobs across our country. And I really believe open source has a role to play there. You know, so um, our door is always open to you if you want to get in touch. And it's, you know, again, I just end where I start. I'm a tech evangelist. I've been somewhat saddened to see technology or engineering going from being, if you like, uh, somewhat boring, but useful that's how people used to treat me at parties when I was a... Uh, um, um, to uh, exciting but exploitative. 
you know, I want to change that. I want to help deliver the real promise of digital and technology for everyone, everywhere. And I look forward to your help in doing that. Thank you. Woo!